But first of all, I want Thank to just you. a quick wrap on the market. We see the market coming down about three quarters of a cent today, extending the losses that we saw earlier in the week, or rather earlier um, <laughs> what we saw late last week. Give us a feel of sentiment on the ground today. Thank you, Wally. A pleasure being with you. I like to observe that um, quite um, uh, like what we experienced on Friday, the market has uh, continued uh, to decline. Uh, the market came down by about 0.54 percent today. The uh, all share index uh, closed at 21,028 points. The market cap also came down, closing at 6.71 percent. But uh, the entire market uh, was actually dragged down by the heavy decline in the shares of Dangote Cement, the security lost for Naira today. And so it does appear that uh, the, the market is uh, sliding uh, gradually into a bearish state. And this may not be unconnected with uh, the, the state of the macro economy. As you are aware, I think uh, last week or so, uh, the monetary authorities uh, sold some treasury bills and um, that led to macroeconomic liquidity squeeze. And we also believe that later this week or early next week, DMO is also likely to sell some bond. And uh, this may also have a material effect on the state of uh, the, the macroeconomy. Right. So the fixed income market obviously putting some pressure on equities. But um, one, is one key statistic that for me really drives on that point is the significant drop we're seeing in value traded. Today we saw only about 1 billion Naira traded. That's down from about 2.9 billion on Friday. Why, why are so many people staying on the sidelines in your view? So you can see that um, uh, assets are migrating massively to fixed income. And so we have uh, just very little uh, financial assets coming into equities. And if you look at the kind of uh, securities that investors are positioning in now, they are actually the defensive stocks. For instance, uh, the, the top gainers today were uh, UACN, which continued uh, the trend that uh, started on Friday, followed by PZ, and then uh, Nigerian breweries. These are multinationals that are defensive uh, stocks uh, that people are positioning in. But generally, there isn't any material information that is price sensitive to drive the market now because uh, almost all the uh, full year results have been announced and dividends uh, have been paid for quite a number of uh, stocks. And so precisely from uh, the, the, the fundamentals of the companies themselves and distributions to investors, there is nothing now to drive uh, the, the market other than what is happening in the macroeconomy. And we are seeing a situation where migration of assets uh, massively to the fixed income market is uh, having a, a deleterious effect on equities. And so it's not unlikely that equities may be a little bit weak <coughs> now until uh, we, we have um, a price uh, uh, sensitive information that is material enough to take equities out of uh, the doldrums. All right. But then all we're standing, uh, Wale, we're yeah, still I'm seeing a lot of transactions uh, in some of the insurance stocks. For instance, today, WAPI uh, traded over 29 million units, which uh, was quite high for such uh, a, a, a small uh, uh, company. But we believe that uh, some strategic investors uh, are taking position in that uh, mm. security considering the fact that WAPIC Insurance was uh, previously a member of the Intercontinental Group. And now that assets has taken over, and with the CBN's uh, directive to banks uh, to shed off their subsidiaries if they are not doing a hold co uh, uh, structure, we are probably seeing assets bank uh, withdrawing gradually from that security, and then a set of new investors are uh, coming in. All right, clearly, so also okay. Yeah, well, uh, Transcorp, I I'm sure you also want to know about Transcorp. Yes, Transcorp also traded heavily today. Uh, over 20 million units uh, traded, but that was not sufficient to drag the security out of fatigue. Mm. If you realize that that stock had uh, actually been upswing for a number of days, 
So it, it actually still uh, came down to Well, clearly, so it, has, it has come a long way. Like, clearly, like you point you made about Transco is very, very clear. But um, I want to take you back to the insurance companies. You mentioned the trade on WAPIC shares were clearly a, an isolated event. It's not something you see every day. Um, the whole insurance sector clearly has taken a huge um, battery in over the last two years. In your, in your view, do you think that is impacting the pricing of perhaps the good names in that sector, like Guarantee Trust Insurance and Continental Reinsurance? Do you think that is dragging down their valuation? Well, from the fundamentals of uh, GT Assurance, uh, Custodian and Allied Insurance, Continental Reinsurance, and uh, recently ICO, we have companies that uh, have very solid fundamentals, and so their fundamentals are actually uh, putting them in the leadership position in that uh, sector. Uh, I like to observe that as a result of the meltdown and uh, the crisis in the stock market, a lot of those insurance uh, companies had their balance sheets damaged. And so they are just trying to recover from that damage now. And uh, some of them are improving in their fundamentals. They are becoming more profitable. And some of them are even uh, starting to pay dividends. And so what I can say is that um, that sector is gradually re-emerging from the damage it suffered as a result of uh, the, the meltdown in the stock market. All but, right, final point for yeah. me today. Give us your thoughts on, I mean, clearly you've, you've made a point that it seems there's not much um, in the short term that we can take this market forward. But looking further ahead, what do you see out there that could be a catalyst for this market. Some people, for instance, are talking about perhaps if we see more new listings and we're hearing that we might see a few in the next few days. Yeah, well, uh, sincerely speaking, it may be difficult for equities to uh, actually appreciate remarkably considering the disparities in yield between fixed income and uh, equities. We have an equities market that has an average yield of about uh, uh, 7 8 percent compared to the yield of about 15, 16 percent on fixed income. And so uh, we're still going to have, um, we're still going to have uh, assets migrating massively to fixed income rather than to equities. But sporadically on case by case basis, if um, companies uh, are able to come up with fantastic uh, quarterly results, and these results are reflected in the uh, distributions at the end of the, the, the trading period, then obviously we can have some securities uh, that can, um, can actually defend uh, their positions in the market.